All right, quickly we'll move on for the first panel discussion we have. Uh, let me welcome on stage our session chair first, Yatin Balian, managing partner, national head of media investment, Omnicom Media Group India, and our expert panel members are Avi Kumar, chief marketing officer, IGP.com, Sneha John, director of brand and social Swiggy, Sitesh Joglekar, vice president, marketing, Baijus, Tanvir Khan, GM, brand marketing, Dunso. And also we have Vineet Karnik, head of sports, e-sports, e and entertainment, Ground M South Asia. Can you all please put your hands together for our panelists and our <laughs> session chair? We have Yatin Balian. I'll be handing over the mic to him. Thank you so much. Good morning. Am I loud and clear at the extreme corner? A little more energy is because sports is a <laughs> vertical where we need kind of kind of energy to discuss, right? Uh, fantastic. Now, first of all, uh, welcome to have this conversation on sports, which is fortifying the brand building process. And, and myself being a, a sports person and sports enthusiast, this is, I'm pretty excited to have, uh, to listen to your thoughts uh, uh, on, you know, uh, if you see in last uh, a decade or, or five years or so in particular, we see how the advancement on technology has created uh, newer categories, right? Be it in, uh, in FinTech, EduTech, uh, convenience tech, travel tech, right? And, and which has changed the entire <coughs> the game, game of marketing. And, and uh, to that effect, I would, uh, and you all are, have, are at a different uh, journey of growth, right? And, and I would like to un understand where are your immediate marketing or advertising priorities. Uh, and and even if you can contribute from a, from an agency perspective from, you know, for all these, yeah. It's for all, uh, then we're starting with you. Uh, am I audible? If not, please tell me, uh, right? Uh, for us, I think we are in the phase of growth. And when I say growth, I think people in the room will also agree. We are looking for sustainable growth a growth that can uh, you know last for long uh, right and we recently launched a new category of grocery deliveries uh, that we are trying to deliver in 19 minutes right uh, some of the markets are mature hence we are looking for sustainable growth uh, where some of the market we recently launched uh, which are looking for exponential growth and hence the objective for those cities are different but from a business perspective you ask me we are looking for sustainable growth and i think that's going to be the long term vision for us at least so uh, I think all of us are looking for growth. Uh, <laughs> we are looking for new consumers. We are looking to uh, retain the existing ones that we've acquired. Uh, what is uh, very important in, I think, uh, our brand's journey at the moment is to create a brand which is very consumer-centric. We are creating a brand that solves for the occasion and celebration retail in India. And with the consumer at the center, we are looking at how is it that we can ease the life of the consumer whenever they think about occasion, whenever they think about retail, whenever they think about e-commerce for occasion and retail. Interesting. Yes, Nia. So, uh, Yatin, um, for Swiggy in specific, our focus for the next, I would say, few years, so food delivery, as you know, has been around for some time now. Uh, the focus for us is actually going to be growing the category and, you know, us as well. Uh, and why I say to just put some things into perspective, so China right now is at 52% of penetration for food delivery among internet active users, and India that number starts at 17%. Wow. <laughs> so there's definitely a lot of room for us to grow, uh, and the idea is like from a communication perspective as well, what we want to do is try and showcase to this long tail of consumers about how food delivery, convenience, and thereby Swiggy is relevant in their lives, right? So, uh, yeah, that's our focus for the next few years. Yeah, so this, yeah. yeah. So at Baiju's, you know, uh, think of, if you think of education, what has happened? For two years, schools were closed. And now schools are going back, you know, life is going back to sort of pre-COVID normal as we, as we talk about it. And uh, parents are looking for options. Parents are looking for online options. Some parents are looking for hybrid options. We believe future of education is, off is hybrid. You know, offline plus online, wherein both combining together to, to deliver best of both worlds. So whether, whether, whatever the, the, the consumer is looking for, if it is hybrid, offline, or online, we are there in different, shape, different forms, and that's the kind of messaging that uh, we are, that's the kind of role that we think communication 
will play for us in the in these next three to six months. Yeah, when it's from our agency perspective. Actually, all the marketeers have made my <laughs> job a bit easy <laughs> because while everybody is chasing growth uh, from a consulting standpoint, my answer is very simple: that uh, sports is the best platform uh, from a growth perspective because. Obviously, uh, it's the most um, uh, effective pop culture today uh, that we see. I mean, if you look at uh, the momentum in media, in consumers, uh, everybody wants to have a point of view on sports. And cricket obviously rules the roost. And I was just talking to somebody that uh, pre-COVID cricket was just about 86% of the whole sports pie. And post-COVID, it's gone up to 94%. Fantastic. So, yeah, that's so awesome that's set. That's a very interesting uh, way, and most of uh, my friends out here have positions on cricket, and which is great. So, uh, continue doing so because that's going to be your recipe for growth. Uh, and uh, and the reason why you should do that, it's not because I am saying you should do that. It's because sports remains the m uh, most effective appointment-making platform ever. Because in a fragmented uh, economy today, uh, consumers are uh, are doing multiple things on multiple devices at uh, at the same time. Uh, but uh, uh, say a 8 p.m. or a 7.30 game, you have an assured audience uh, glued onto the screen. And that's what you guys are looking for because you are chasing the consumers and consumers are chasing the sporting platform. So that's Fantastic. my opening remark. Nice pitch. We are convinced. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, considering uh, uh, Tanvir, uh, uh, where there's so much emphasis on performance, right? Because the, the uh, you want to recruit audiences and their business. There's a huge focus on performance. In, the, in this <coughs> context, how you think, uh, uh, what do you think about brand building as an exercise in context? There's so much focus on performance. I mean, see, uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, internet first facing brand, right? We are consumer tech uh, facing brand. For us, performance marketing is going to be a very, very important channel. Uh, as I said, I think we are looking for growth, and when you look for a short-term growth, uh, nothing can beat performance, uh, right? And that's why I think that's going to be there. Uh, uh, but in parallel, I think brand building exercise as a strategy is going to play a very, very important role, uh, right? And I'll take a few steps back. I think uh, when you see the whole pandemic time period and after pandemic, uh, the screen time of a consumer has increased. Yeah. Right. Uh, most of the people are spending a lot of time reading news, watching content, spending a lot of time on social media. Contrary, uh, the attention span has gone down. Now, with that equation of your uh, screen time going up and your uh, attention span going down, there are hundreds and thousands of brands fighting for that mind share. Uh, right. And I'm sure... Uh, and hence the need for... Hence uh, the need, right. right. Uh, because there's no differentiator. If I'm delivering groceries in 19 minutes, I'm sure somebody's delivering in 25 minutes. And taking a cue from there, Avi, you know, there's always a conflict between, you know, the short-term sales lift uh, uh, versus efficiency and effectiveness. So how at, uh, at your organization, how you are balancing the two? Uh, two? So, you know, uh, we make sure that the messaging never steers away from the main communication. It's very important that whether you are on a bottom funnel, mid funnel, or a top funnel, you have to be very clear that the value prop that is there for the brand, that has to be, that has to be communicated. Now, um, we're not Amazon. Our value proposition is still being established. Consumers, we just spoke about, have a, are, are fragmented in terms of the kind of media that they consume to the kind of exposure that they have on brands. And it's very important to be present both on the top funnel, which is continuously building the brand so that the value prop is clear through the brand proposition, and also talking about the same value proposition even in your bottom funnel. So while a performance marketing will have a marginal impact or will have a short-term impact, but at the same time, it's also very important for the brand to establish what it stands for in the long term. Fantastic. So um, uh, uh, coming to uh, television and medium, which is like is almost uh, 900 million uh, reach, right? And, and it can't get better. And there's a further scope to uh, to go to a 1300 odd million, right? So Sneha, from your perspective, how uh, or what role TV play in your media mix considering you need to balance both the short term as well as the long term efficiency and effectiveness part of it? So, uh, to be very honest, it's a very complicated question, right? And, I, and I'll, tell I, I just <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because uh, objective first, what do I use TV media for? I would say it's largely for long term. 
but at the end of the day, uh, Tanvir, uh, like Danzo, Swiggy, we are in like very actionable categories, right? So I can actually show you an ad right now, an ASMR ad of a cola being poured into a glass, and you probably have your phone on your hand, and you can immediately take action and order it, and you know have it by your side. So I think that's a good thing uh, as well as a bad thing, but. Uh, in terms of the objective that we actually, the first principle objective that we use televisions for, it's largely for long-term brand building, but uh, I would be amiss if I say there are no short-term effects, right? Like there are definitely short-term uh, impact as well that we see uh, with long-term brand building advertising as well. So considering uh, uh, we discussed that, you know, how the, uh, the, the concentration span is reducing and, and as an individual, I uh, in, want to enjoy content on a larger screen, uh, so, uh, so, um, so this for you, do you think that uh, consuming content on a larger screen, uh, like uh, the television has a far more better uh, recall and move uh, mind measures better? Absolutely. You know, I think uh, what is happening is, you know, if you think of education as a category, right, you know, the consumer is different from the customer. My consumer is the child and my customer is the parent. You know, very, very few occasions where the family is coming together and enjoying something together, yeah? And sports is one of them. And, uh, yeah, so I think large screen, family being together creates those conversations, creates those, those moments of discovery for discovery that, that lead to trials, that lead to engagement. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's, that's, been, that's been one of the, one of the drivers for Baiju's for sure. Uh, uh Taking the cue from that, and you mentioned about uh, how you want to kind of, uh, in this entire changed media dynamics, how the TV helped you to create a gen uh, build category, uh, quick commerce, right? How, uh, what the role TV played in your, uh, uh, your journey so far in terms of building category as well as the regime of uh, quick commerce? I mean, I'm not comparing with Swiggy and Baijus. I think they are more dominant <laughs> player when it comes to TV. But for us, I think for the first time we went to national uh, and we chose IPL as one of the medium uh, uh, for, you know, uh, advertising on the TV, right? But I'll take a few seconds to explain why TV advertising really, really work, right? And I think he touched base on that, right? Uh, when you are married uh, without family, you tend to see a lot of movies and content, uh, right? That sort of, uh, and that's why TV viewing in India is still a family affair. Uh, when you're married without family, you will see content. Uh, when you're married with family staying, you will see a lot of uh, news channels, right? But when, as a family has to come together, I think sports is the only channel where every member of the family enjoys the TV. And the amount of reach that it gives at a cost of impression, right, is humongous, right? So that sort of brand loyalty, brand love, and I'm sure, I mean, I shouldn't be saying it sitting on a stage, uh, but we as an Indian feel that our brand has grown big because in our TV, uh, right? So there's a lot of trust, a lot of faith, a lot of uh, uh, initial, push that comes towards a brand comes from a TV because it covers every sort of uh, So it's like collective space. viewing, celebrating, is, watching, uh, enjoying, and thereby is a more uh, collective uh, decision making happening, Correct. right? And it's also two things again, right? Uh, one of the most trusted medium in India today is TV. Uh, that's one part of it, right? Second, uh, it also impacts your other campaign holistically, uh, right? Your performance CAC reduces, your performance, your creative and the performance reduces, right? Your other channels start performing and start giving you better conversion when people start viewing the content on TV. So taking uh, further ahead, I mean, how has your uh, been experience on associating uh, uh, television from your business standpoint? So we've, uh, we've been a regular in terms of uh, spending on TV and within TV, specifically sports. Uh, so one, I feel it's more to do, it's not really about uh, just sports or just it's you have to choose a channel that works for you and where your brand is in the journey will also decide how you want to you know spend and what channel will work for you but uh, so far uh, sports has really worked for us what we've seen is that uh, it's got a direct impact on uh, both the brand recall uh, like Tanvir mentioned that there is a trust that gets created when you're seen on a larger screen uh, when you're seen on uh, serious sports there is a brand recall as well as brand love that gets starts to get created. Uh, consumers start to search more for your brand. We've seen 30% lift in terms of our search results uh, for the brand whenever we've done a campaign on sports. And uh, that kind of creates, builds up the confidence on a regular basis that, you know, uh, there is a direct uh, impact on what you're spending on. Uh, 
uh, we are a digital first brand, right? And uh, the fun of it is that you can almost, and I'm, I'm, I'm maybe exaggerating, but you can measure on a wall-to-wall -wall basis. So there is an ad, and I see a spike in the traffic. So there is a direct correlation in terms of the ad playing on TV and the traffic on the website. And that's, that's the proof of the pudding, right? If I may add, right, it's also one of the medium which has the highest captive audience. Your attention is there on the TV, whereas on your YouTube, you can still skip it. On a social media, you can still scroll it. But on a TV, the like audience is very captive. So your attention increases widely. And more, more importantly, on sports, right? That, uh, because the games are high, uh, high voltage, and, and you do not want to miss, off, miss any of the action, and thereby the attention span is, is fantastic. Uh, uh, Vinita, uh, there's, there's a Yugo study which shows you know, that 83% of people you know, want to consume or watch sports on a large screen in TV, right? I personally enjoy that on TV. What's your thought? Uh, and how advertisers look to kind of capitalize on this particular aspect? Yeah, so it's a, it's a no-brainer, right? So uh, the experience of sport uh, or any large format like, say, a cinema is best on TV. And that's what uh, everybody here from a brand marketing point of view are also saying. So, I mean, uh, and, and make no mistake, I mean, all of them are the digi digital first brands and uh, they are platforms themselves. So if, uh, if their own internal data is saying that television is, is one of the mediums uh, which you can't miss and from a brand building standpoint, that's the best medium, uh, there is no better endorsement uh, than what we have right now. So, so absolutely, I mean, it's all about your experience. Uh, and, uh, and I always wonder, uh, because I know that India is, a, from a digital point of view, a mobile first market. So at least me personally, I can't relate to seeing uh, any large format content on, on, a, sh on a small screen. I, I obviously, personal preference, I would prefer a big screen. Uh, coming to uh, the sports and is, is the center piece, right? How the across sports, not only cricket, we see how uh, the engagement uh, with the audience has emerged across sports, uh, more coming to cricket is like a 700 million reach, right? That kind of uh, uh, IPL can can offer. At the same time, World Cup 2021 has close to 400 million uh, reach. And even uh, India, Pakistan, we thought that the arc rivals playing, believing close to 115 odd million, which which that kind of base. And considering IPL is one of the largest league in the, in the world, right? So are we uh, uh, at a stage where that is our answer to Super Bowl uh, and this question so all. Are we there or it's uh, there's little ground to grow? I've been saying it for the last five years that that's our answer to Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. And I would, I would, and I said, I mean, like I said in, uh, in my first answer that uh, why shouldn't it be? Because which mm -hmm. other content piece promises that kind of audience a over a period of time on, or on that, uh, on that moment? There is uh, no other piece of content that I know which gives you uh, that kind of a guaranteed audience, right? So it's a no-brainer in my mind. Absolutely, I think completely second that. You know, in fact, I can, I can tell you an incident. Um, so the Australia series that happened, you know, the kind of passion that it evoked, you know, and the, the, kind, of, the kind of, you know, engagement, it's, it's just unparalleled, right? You know, what we, what we saw when, when we saw the Rishabh Pan hitting the winning run, it, it is etched in people's minds, you know, and that, that, is, that, is, that is what I think is the differentiator. I completely agree. Sarcastic, sarcastically saying, I don't even uh, compare live cricket with any of the other programming. I compare uh, the extra innings with, uh, with other, other things. So, I mean, it's that powerful as a, as a medium. So, uh, uh, yeah. I, I think it's a great idea. But <laughs> so, you know, you also have to look at what your requirement is. Most importantly, does your budget let you be present in a place where you have 100 million cu customers, right? And do you want to be present? And the budget has to be sustainable, right? Yeah. You, you have to do it regularly. You can't just come in and go out. You have to be pre then present in lots of spurts, lots of you know, other uh, matches that are happening, just to create that kind of a brand recall and presence. So the budget also needs to be uh, aligned along with the 100 million. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's the business opportunity as well, right? Not only audience, but the business opportunity. Uh, when it's st uh, staying with you, uh, how, how we are looking at uh, IPL and World Cup like an event from a media campaign standpoint, I know it sounds very basic, but at the same time, from a digital first 
uh, brand, what other than the scale this property uh, offer and where the advertisers can, can uh, look to build their audience at the same time business proposition. Yeah, so that's, that's quite interesting. So, uh, uh, so see, look, uh, you need to have, uh, so the, it all depends upon what do you want to drive as an objective, what do you want to land as your marketing or a brand challenge, right? So that will determine your investments, that will determine your platform, the choice of your platform. So uh, there is no one answer, there is no one size fit all answer to this one, but, uh, uh, but uh, as, as uh, you just said that uh, the budgets have to also fit in. I mean, in my mind, uh, the campaigns today or the objectives today are getting aligned to uh, these kind of properties, right? Because eventually, uh, it's a, it's, you're chasing a consumer. And if your consumers are going to be captive around a particular content piece, uh, you have very limited options but to figure out your life around that piece of content, right? And therefore, if you see over the last uh, 15 plus years, most of the marketing uh, uh, dollars are being aligned to a summer campaign because IPL happens during summer. Most of the campaigns are aligned towards uh, the World Cup campaigns because you know that if India delivers better results, I mean, you have a phenomenal audience base. Look at what ha happened to Asia Cup. Everybody uh, was playing it safe uh, uh, to what I thought uh, initially. Because, but and, and the moment Asia Cup started building up ratings, building up viewership, uh, everybody wanted to join that bandwagon, right? So today, uh, there are m more than one reasons and examples where cricket has delivered, sport overall has delivered. So I think it's the other way around. I think the marketing dollars need to be aligned to the audience preferences rather than uh, rather than looking at budgets and marketing uh, uh, problems because uh, if you are looking at scale, if you're looking at uh, uh, consumer mind measures, uh, I think we have very little choice today but to look at these big ticket impact properties, uh, especially in the sport domain. If I can second that, right? Uh, I think that wasn't I'm the case. I'm loving this, Tanvir, okay? So, I mean, normally it's I know you're other selling way around. This I mean, to if you're seconding it, it's fantastic. I think the, <laughs> we all should be extremely happy about this because, but that's what we're here for, right? I think a uh, huge round of applause, guys. <laughs> no, we all are convinced. We are participating in the IPL. Is that what you want? <laughs> no, I second that, right? I think a few years back, uh, uh, if I can say that, if I'm allowed to, that as much diverse we are, come from multi multicultured language, sort of different states, right? There are only two events in India that sort of uh, let a brand to spend growth dollar. One is IPL and second is Diwali. There is no other event, uh, right? And uh, for us as a brand, I think I'm sure people will also agree to the fact that because one of the high decibel sort of uh, medium, uh, right, where you have so much of concurrent user viewing the content at the same time, you have to be present by the virtue of you want to be or by the FOMO of other brands, uh, right? So it does drive because there is no other sort of event that in India can drive that much of volume for you. So that's one part of it. I think one question that you asked is that what else it has to offer, right? So beyond, I think, uh, short-term sales that uh, somebody mentioned, brand recall is always there. But I think more importantly, it also drives a lot of brand conversation. If you're able to use those properties that uh, you know, ICC has to offer or Hotstar has to offer, that drives a lot of brand conversation. So if you're looking to spike up your brand conversation, you can, you know, uh, smartly choose those property and drive your brand conversation beyond your sales. So just, just one thought on that. So I will have more than 50 case studies where, uh, where a mix of uh, categories, Mr. mix of uh, brands have used sport and cricket as a medium and delivered, okay? So just give you a quick, uh, latest one is i mean uh, paytm changed hands with mastercard and the first match happened two days back in chandigarh okay the kind of response we've got for the brand mastercard uh, in the social media and in the quick research that we did on, on digital uh, over the last 48 hours is unreal okay it's i can't uh, i can't uh, divulge the numbers right now but we will do very soon it's unreal impact uh, the first match huh, and if we think, and, and we all thought that you need to be at least five match old, 10 match old, one season old, first match delivering exponential conversations in social media, exponential conversations in top of the mind. Uh, and that's the power of television 
uh, if I have to say, and, and, and this was not even IPL, this was not even the World Cup match. This was a bilateral India-Australia. Fantastic, fantastic. So, Siddhesh, uh, coming to you in terms of, uh, you are in a very interesting category, right? It's academics. Uh, in some way, it attached to seriousness in terms of how you uh, learn. At the same time, we are talking about sports, which is a fun element of it. So I, uh, I would like to understand how you build synergy of, you know, the learning and, and the fun, which is sport aspect of it. Absolutely. I think uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, they might look conflicting categories to, to us, but then, you know, they all chase the same, same goal, you know, excellence. Sports talks about excellence. Sports talks about achievement. And academics is also about excellence achievement. You know, so that way, that way, I mean, that way they are, there, there, is, there is some congruence there. As I, as I said earlier, it was a family viewing kind of, one of the avenues where family sort of, families are together, families are seeing this, seeing us together. And, and I think, I think, uh, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our icons are, are from, from, from the current generation for sure, have, have, have done well in academics. Similarly, we are seeing some icons do exceedingly well in sport. So for, I'll tell you one, one example of, you know, we have created a wicket to wicket kind of a series with ICC. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And today it is one of, it is the most viewed content, con edu sports content, educational content on YouTube, on, your, on YouTube's, the Instagrams of the world. And this is because of association with the do. With Absolutely. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's all, it talk, talks about, you know, every, all, every episode is about one concept. It talks about the Chinaman, it talks about the run up, it talks about how do you do the dusra. The, the physics of it. The and the analytics part of uh, Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, it, it creates that, it, it has, you know, the, the congruence of academics and sports, you know, somewhere has delivered, okay, this is what Baiju's can do for you, you know, if you can visualize things in sport as well, you know, why not in physics, why not in chemistry? You know, so that, that has, that is, uh, I'll that take that an system. argument from a business standpoint, perfect, but I'm not taking this argument going back home. My kid will say, you know, excellence, I want to watch sports <laughs> and not be investing too much time uh, on studies. But yeah, it's very relatable the way trying, uh, you know, and I see it in my own home. The kid is trying like across, the, uh, is, is be it cricket or soccer, they're analyzing so much them on their own without being fed any information. They are their own little expert, not the expert on chai, but it's just that they're actually building uh, uh, their own analysis here, trying to put it up, their own narrative across uh, different media. Uh, and coming to you, then we we ha we having offline conversation. You know, you you uh, leveraged IPL. You decided to IPL mid uh, mid of the last year, right? And and what was the mindset? Because usually either the call usually been taken pre ahead of time, like a like a it's it's an event in itself, right? The festive in itself, right? The cricket is as good as a festive, and you pre plan So what is your psyche of going mid uh, mid of the season? Honestly, we didn't go in mid. Uh, we chose to be towards the end. Okay, uh, uh, that's right. Uh, uh, we I'm felt, I think, uh, I'm sure people okay, will also second that, that in IPL, the viewing peaks only at the start and the end. Majority, right? Uh, yeah, uh, there's the slight deviation that across correct. in the middle. Initial uh, is a, it, you know, organic buzz, and then towards the end is just that your favorite teams are fighting for that favorite spots, right? That's why your viewing uh, goes up. So it was not a... Uh, uh, immediate sort of thing, but it was planned uh, that we will go ahead and partner in the second half. Also, because operationally uh, we have launched few cities, we wanted them to get sort of uh, a breather uh, for us to grow. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it was planned. It was planned from the day one that we thought about doing IPL. Uh, but just that we wanted to give those newer cities a breather for them to grow, and then we wanted to accelerate the growth. I think that's what we did with that. Fantastic. Uh, Siddhish, uh, you had been associated with sports for quite some time. Uh, and uh, and from a how, the, how you use sports, right? How, how you see the role of sports uh, on, on TV has evolved for you? Because while I understand is the audience you want, the recruitment you want, but at the same time, has the role of sports has emerged or changed over a period of time? Because you have been associating for quite some time now. Yes, of course. So, you know, you know back in the, you know, our first, Right from our first association with sports, yes, the, the, you know, from the discovery phase to now to growth phase, now engagement, deeper engagement, yes, of course, uh, the, you know, sport has evolved. In fact, I, I mean, I go beyond, beyond cricket, you know, on, on this front, you know, for example, you know, we were associated with the Hockey World Cup in uh, Bhubaneswar. I, you must, you, you, you should have seen it, seen the excitement in Bhubaneswar to believe the kind of excitement that was there locally. 
you know i think i think sport india india of course there are there would be I mean, cricket is followed nationally but there are enough number of other sports as well that are followed in, at least, certainly in pockets so for example you know we were associated with kbfc uh, kerala blasters so you know the, the they made the finals uh, this year you know and the kind of energy the kind of excitement that is that was generated in the in the among the fan base was phenomenal so you know i think uh, i think as a in terms of the brand journey associating with sports over a period of time different objectives were were were, were met you know one was is right back in back in maybe 2017 2018 it was about establishing the category yeah now, now it is now it right now for example is deeper engagement across different different channels offline online hybrid yeah so so yeah i think i think absolutely the the role of tv has tv role of sport has evolved and uh, yeah i think uh, the obviously the reach the bottom the denominator has been the reach what what you are talking about so it's very interesting you know how <clears throat> how uh, uh, education led you know how being uh, for runner front runner in terms of driving sports engagement even at a grassroots level while sitting at metro we usually don't get exposed but this is a fantastic insight which you can take take back uh, uh, are we coming to you in terms of you know we all understand how uh how a digital brand when it drives on such a large platform uh, there is opportunity for the consumer to engage on mobile right because you are digital first brand uh, you, you know, the awareness is being built and you're engaging on mobile so does being pre being present on sports enhances the efficacy of deployment outside television it does so the answer is yes um uh, whenever you are advertising on a on on sports tv or any other you know uh, medium you would look at the impact that it is bringing on you, the native medium on which your brand is which is digital so there are conversations that get driven and i think a very important part of this is also the creative so one part of it is the channel that you are using but also the creative that you have on the channel that is being put on air because that then starts to drive conversations that drives curiosity among consumers to uh, you know sample the brand to go for the brand and whenever there is a if if they come across the brand on in the digital ecosystem which may be on instagram uh, on social media or it may be on google when they are searching for the products that they want to buy that recall or that engagement then becomes much more higher because they have been exposed to the brand and they know, they trust the brand more so the efficacy becomes much higher taking this cue ahead then we i remember the create one uh, campaign you did on on fridge and qr code let it is does that impacted uh, little details on that particular would be Did great we? Uh, <laughs> so i think uh, the fridge ka chodo uh, campaign was very strategic call okay all uh, right and i'll just take two minutes to explain that also right uh, because we were entering ipl and most of our competition was also there right and the market was i think cluttered uh with brands right and in one sort of uh, ad break you see at least five six advertisement right so the idea was to create content which is clutter breaking and that should stand out because we understand that attention span is very very limited right words your first job the first appliance that you buy is fridge so there's sort of relation that you build it on right and we when you touch that sort of uh, nostalgia i think that's grab your attention so the content that we thought about for the fridge chodo campaign was just just that that fridge is synonym of freshness and we deliver freshness in 19 minute right so we able to touch that and correlate it i think that's where the game was well on the qr code i'm sure most of people have seen for the ipl final the idea was that we were live for 20 odd days and we realized that people would have seen our ad once at least in the ipl season right and whatever creative juice whatever brand recall that needs to be called out has already been done right so we have ipl final which is the most premium property uh in the nation at that moment right so what else we can do to drive the brand conversation right so we just not did ipl final as the medium but we went ahead and bought all the medias in the india at the same time so 8:30 if you are watching ipl and any channel in india it was a media blackout so whether you talk about jana entertainment whether you talk about news whether you watching any ott platform also 8:30 it was a media blackout only qr code that you can see irrespective of which ever channel or that you go that's why if you go on instagram or twitter or linkedin the conversation has spiked suddenly right and i think kabir also posted after that ad that we saw 10x sort of growth in that specific car uh, right so that was 
uh, that idea was a disruption it. got a lot of attention and talkability uh, uh, coming to you sneha from a association standpoint you have been associating with sports and cricket uh, how you look sports from a audience uh, opportunity standpoint as well as a business opportunity because your category is very very different and and i've been seeing a lot of activity around so your take on that because that's where the business angle comes pretty strong got it so um for us actually cricket was a serendipitous serendipitous discovery uh, way back in i think early 2017 uh, late 2017 we started off with advertising on cricket and uh, it worked really well of course like the stage of the brand was much much smaller and hence a lot easier to measure lifts um, so uh, that's that's how we actually embarked on that journey and like we were just like putting blocks together one by one right so uh when it came to 2018 and we've actually been associated uh with IPL right or advertising on IPL right from 2018 uh and the one thing that i can say is uh even from 2018 i think when we went in to pick up IPL there was a razor sharp focus on what we wanted to achieve uh at that time itself like when we were present in seven cities the idea was um anyway we know during ipl people are going to be sitting at home and watching it with family with friends with alone possibly how can swiggy come in as like ubiquitous to the cricket watching or sport watching or even like sitting at home and chilling and watching something experience like how popcorn is to movies right so i think we were focused on the objective right from 2018 uh and over time we've built that and what i would Uh, like the uh, the testament is to see how it's become like the category is grown on the back of it now it's become an organic consumer behavior it's essentially behavior that we've created of like you know swigging in or ordering in when you're watching a match or when you're staying at home or when you're on the weekend so uh, we we've, we've seen we started off as a advertising opportunity it's now become an organic business opportunity because now we prepare for it because like we created it <laughs> way back in 2018 right so or from 2018 rather so yeah that's that's our journey so far so just to uh, you know uh, so it's not longer just advertising it's a, 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 a it's a, it's about uh, how the various elements of marketing at play a little little more details on that would be great because it's no longer just straight forward brand building at absolutely advertising. not i think again like i said i think the two things that that are very important for us to take a call on whether we should advertise at any point ipl non ipl etc is the first thing is the consumer behavior like what is it that we're that what is the business or brand objective that we're trying to drive uh, and two like what is the consumer what is in it for the consumer right so uh, because like we've seen this organic habit of people staying at home and ordering in then we've realized okay we need to definitely have specific consumer propositions and that can't be the same proposition each and every time so i can't tell you each and every time there's 50% off because that gets boring beyond a point right so uh i think again like trying to understand consumer psyche what is it that they're looking for how can we again try and influence behavior more uh is is uh so like i would think i would go back down into like consumer behavior and see how sports watching and food delivery can go hand in hand so yeah. fantastic i guess this this has changed the entire the way the advertising uh, being viewed on on sports uh, are we uh, you are into gifting and 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 fl- uh, flowers so do you also Uh, build certain kind of moment um, moment led advertising because this is also you know gifting is related to certain moments be it diwali or be it others how does that uh, that plays in your uh, marketing you know things so for us uh, see the consumer is coming in either uh, for a festival such as diwali rakhi or a special day such as a valentines day mothers day fathers day or certain occasion in their life which may be a birthday anniversary housewarming or even you know now we are getting into that space where a uh, special day which can be by the pat of on the back by a boss also is a special moment that you can celebrate so these are some of the use cases why the consumer would be coming some of them are very very time specific if you are to shop for diwali if you are to shop for uh, you know uh, rakhi send rakhi to someone then that communication has to be very topical and at the moment right and then there are others where you need to create a, the recall of the brand that yummiest cakes online are on igp.com so that is a that is a little bit more long term but whenever you are in your search journey in your discovery phase you will remember the brand and hence 
the reason for us so when when in our journey from 500 orders we've moved to a peak of about 50000 orders right and that journey in those journey whenever we had a spike we decided what is the next phase of growth and how do we achieve it that is where we thought that atl and within atl cricket could be a medium which could give us that kind of reach which could give us that kind of uh, awareness for the brand and help us to reach out to the next level of consumer whether it is for a festival which has immediate short term impact or for the proposition of the brand which may not be a immediate requirement for the consumer but a little bit more long term and we have as many cricketing days throughout the year to capture all the <laughs> respective <laughs> festivities right yeah yeah uh, now uh, so i guess we had a uh, fantastic conversation just you know from how we leverage sports just to summarize from each of you how what are your best two or three best practices from a digital first brand to leverage any sports event you have in in a bits and pieces mentioned about but uh, just to summarize what are the two or three or or in you know best best practice how you can leverage sports starting with youth and wear oh i think uh, as i think we were discussing about the same right that once you decide that you are going to be a part of it uh, what is going to make you stand out is the content right and if your content is not at par or beyond your competition i don't think uh, you will be able to grab user attention right so you have to create content which is clutter breaking that is very very important it has to be a have category defining insight that is very very important second third you should be also able to create i think we were talking about the same thing right the use cases so these are three important elements because when you decide then you decided you have bought the property is very uh, uh, costly also by the way right so when you decided and, that these and are effective three. though and effective also uh, right so these are three things that your content has to be at par and bigger than your competition it has to have category defining insight and you should be able to solve a consumer problem with a use case i think that's very very important at the core of it i think it has to be a combination of one frequency you need to have a good frequency when you're on cricket when you are your ad needs to be visible it can't be that you you want to be there just play two ads and you're out you have to have a optimum frequency that is one second creative uh, creator will play a very big role how do you say what you want to say as a brand in the 10 second or maximum 20 that you have uh, and third would be consistency so while you may be present on one series we've been doing this now for 3 years to build the growth that we've got so you have to be consistent in terms of your visibility and your approach so consistency frequency and the creative fantastic the reach continuity and uh, sustenance yeah yeah yes, if yeah. i have to take off from avi i think like the first and most important observation that i've had uh, about how it's been how it's become a success for swiggy is the consistency and the long term vision right like it's, i don't think you should go into ipl or any sporting for that one single shot i think like you should have long term vision to see it through successfully uh, and make sure that you also have like a plan of action on how you're going to keep at it right because most of the brands that you do remember are brands that you've probably been seeing on IPL on cricket etc for a really long time so consistency is like the single most important uh, point the second uh, creative i think everyone's mentioned no need to talk about that uh, the third uh, part that has again is something that i've observed that we've done at swiggy with specifically on sports is experimentation i think we've experimented with like large format Uh, sponsorships we've taken specific you know smaller sponsorships we've done regular advertising we've we've actually played around uh, very well with creative formats as well as the media available on uh, on cricket and on sports and another experiment that we recently ran we actually picked up uh, a sponsorship for a esports broadcast uh, which is very gen z focused so i think experimentation is very very key uh and it will also like help unlock a lot of insights and help shape your plan for the next year as well so these are the three things that i've observed from swiggy yes it is i think uh, yeah i think most of them most of the points have been covered i think more than anything else what problem you are trying to solve has to be clear you know you have to be very clear about what problem are you trying to solve you know for any brand that you are you are you are you are, you are advertising that's a p b i think you know 
I agree with the consistency part, and in, and consistency might vary by the phase of your campaign. You know, it might you might have a different different mix of creatives at the start and at the mid and at the maybe at the late later part. And I think frequency also plays plays a big role. Frequency, you know, in terms of in terms of top of mind, just staying on top of mind recall, you know, because there would be the need for any any category, not only education, might be I might might come up at different points of time. So that moment marketing, which which uh, you know we talked about, which, which we talked about right now, we talked about right now, will be uh, will also play a role there. And when it, these would be the usual conversation with uh, with clients, right? Uh, the creative, the uh, the uh, innovation, experiment, uh, sustainability, creative, all you know, we're nicely summarized by the panelists. Your uh, and it gives a lot of ammunition for discussing with you know with the clients uh, when it comes to a sports like uh, or IPL or World Cup or any other sports. Yeah. So so I will talk about two things. Uh, one is um, one to experiment a lot. And we need to also innovate and push the envelope uh, beyond the point. Because, see, if you want to play safe, uh, cricket is an option. Okay, there is, it's a no-brainer. I mean, just put all your money on cricket, and you're very, very happy. But if you want to find your new customer, you, if you want to find a complete new audience base, complete new market, there is a life beyond cricket as well, uh, which is multiple sports. And Sneha spoke about esports, which is a very, very mushrooming audience, very, very younger audience very, very unpredictable audience. So uh, it's worth experimenting with, with those kind of uh, younger lots. Uh, today, uh, talking about television, I haven't seen any live sport, including Coco, which happened uh, just uh, less than a month back. Uh, even Coco garnered a uh, reach of about, what, 60 plus million people? Uh, you look at Kabaddi, Kabaddi always averaged 150 plus million people. Uh, ISL averaged obviously 200 plus million people. Now, uh, these are perhaps new audiences, right? They're not your cricket audience. Because not everybody follows cricket. There are people who also follow football, people follow kabaddi, people follow hockey, uh, and esports. So experimenting with the newer formats, newer sports, newer audiences, possibly, possibly might give you a complete new, uh, a new strategy or new approach towards uh, your marketing plan. So these are two things I would want to emphasize on in addition to obviously whatever we have spoken till now. Uh, thanks for uh, summarizing. We couldn't have uh, summarized it uh, um, better than this because it's, it's, it's very crystal clear what's to do and what's not to do. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if we have a time to open up for, uh, uh, yeah, uh, we can take a couple of questions. Uh, can't, uh, can't hear you. Uh, yeah, so this question is around uh, brand engagement uh, around cricket. We all uh, talk mostly about cricket, uh, the whole uh, paddle, and rightfully so, because cricket is undoubtedly the religion here, here in the country, right? But uh, with the evolution of other sports here in the country, I mean, we have some of the best boxers, some of the best wrestlers in the world, and not to talk about our badminton stars. Uh, only recently we won the Thomas Cup in badminton, right? But uh, now, uh, with the evolution of other leagues like, like your badminton uh, league and then uh, ISL leagues, do you see a brand conversation uh, that's going to be there uh, around other sports as well? I mean, uh, down the line, maybe eight to ten years from now? That's what I pitched right in my last remark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did uh, uh, yes. mention about going beyond AI to come up on stage and thank them, please. And a picture as well. Can you all step forward? Come forward a little bit. And 